Okay, today I'm going to talk about finite state machines. There seems to be a great deal of confusion around this topic, so I'm just going to go over the basics and hopefully uh, it will make it clear so that everyone can understand. Okay, first of all, what are finite state machines? Why are they a good idea? Uh, a lot of confusion I found as I was in the tutorial classes is that the inputs, the states, and the outputs are three different things. Um, I want to talk briefly about how one goes about capturing the behavior of a finite state machine and the security booth example that I used in class. Now, state, state machines are sequential logic. They are very low level. High level state machines are a thing, but they will be covered later in the course. They can be used to model some simple decision making. The state machine has some memory and some logic. So, based on inputs, the state machine has has a, sa a saved state and that changes and as it changes outputs are produced it changes state on every clock cycle um, so that's a little bit more of a low level technical detail and not essential for understanding the concept at this point why are finite state machines a good idea the main thing being is that they impose a sort of structure and it helps you to give your sequential logic uh, a bit of structure and it makes it a little bit more easy to debug it makes it very clear and they're just very in general very uh, good development tool to use to illustrate a bit of an example to um, so that the differences are quite plain imagine um, a man who for example has a bad day at work that bad day at work perhaps his boss screams at him or what have you um, can be seen as the input now that input causes the man to go into a state of being angry or upset. As an output, when he gets home, he might scream at his dog or do something negative. So the inputs, the states, and the outputs are linked, but they are not the same thing. A converse, a better example, if he's had a good day, then that input will put him into a happy state, and when he gets home, his output might be he'll give his dog a biscuit because he's happy. So that's just to further illustrate. Inputs are any form of stimulus uh, stimulus for the machine from the outside world. Uh, in the case of a finite state machine, it's a very low level, so the, in the inputs are not sophisticated. They're normally a bit or a handful of bits. In theory, there's no restriction on this, but in practice there is, because you actually physically need to design this somehow. They are um, often in the case of a switch, a button, or a binary sensor of some sort. States describe the current condition of the state machine. They are limited uh, and the limitation depends on how much memory your machine has got for storing these states. These states are normally stored in D flip-flops and the state at of a, a machine at any given time is determined by the history of its inputs. So the the machine has memory. It's one of those fundamental things of sequential logic. Outputs are linked to the finite state machine, but on a uh, state, but not on not but are not the same thing. They can depend either on the state only in the case of a more machine, or on the state and its inputs in the case of a mini machine. Just like inputs. Outputs are typically also single bits, i.e. lights or switches, or something of that particular nature. Now, in order to capture the behavior of a state machine, you need to understand on a high level what this machine has to do, uh, what it has to control, what, it has, what decisions it has to make, for example. You need to identify your inputs and your outputs to the system. You need to identify different states of operation and then draw a state machine diagram. To illustrate this, I'm going to go over the example that I used in the tutorial class. Now an important note here, no ambiguity is allowed. If you're a human and you're looking at the diagram, you might be able to follow it fairly logically because you can guess what the machine is supposed to do and if there's something left out you can fill it in. The human brain is good at that. Machines cannot do that. Every single possibility must be dealt with in the case of a machine. So a machine cannot get confused. It needs explicit instructions and complete and consistent instructions as to where it is supposed to go from each and every state. 
So the security booth example that we used is as follows. Uh, a simple one-way controller for a security booth for decontamination, perhaps for a chemical lab or something. There will be two doors, a UV light in between the door, a button to indicate entrance or perhaps a um, card swipe or a retinal scan, whatever the case is, it's just the same thing. And a pressure sensor for inside the booth to check whether there is someone inside. Assume that each operation takes one clock cycle, just to keep things simple. Now there is a very bad diagram of the way that things look. So the booth, pardon me, the booth will be here in the middle and it will have a UV light in it. That will be one of the outputs. Door 1 and door 2 uh, allowing entrance and exit to the booth, booth respectively. A button to indicate that a person wants to enter and a pressure sensor at the bottom to detect whether or not a person is inside the booth. So how does this booth work? The booth should do nothing for most of the time and wait for an input. If someone presses the button, the door one should open to allow the person inside the booth and then close again. If a person is detected in the booth, UV decontamination should occur, otherwise the booth should do nothing. Once the contamination is finished, the second door should be opened. Once the person is left, the door should close again. Now, step one, calculate or uh, determine rather the inputs. Now, there are two inputs here, the button, and I've called that B, and the pressure pad, or the sensor, S. Both of them uh, are positive logic, so in other words, a 1 indicates the sensor is on, and 0 indicates the sensor is off. Um, you might think it's obvious, but writing these things out uh, helps both you at the design time and anyone else who would like to read your design later to make sure that they understand it. Step number two, the outputs, door one and door two. These will be actuators that will open somehow, uh, it, whether it's a motorized arm or whether it's just a lock that can allow you to pull it open yourself. Um, and I've named them D1 and D2. Uh, one being open and zero being closed uh, and the UV light is also an activator uh, an actuator and output I have labeled it L with one having the light on and zero having the light off so for the state machine diagram what I have done here is I've identified these five states um, the outputs I've just compressed into a three bit number D1, D2 and L just to save a little bit of space uh, so, initially, in the start, which I forgot to indicate, we've got state 1. Now, state one, in state 1, the door the, or the booth is busy waiting. Its outputs are all 0. The door 1 and door 2 are both closed, and the light is off. If there is no button press, then the machine should stay in state 1. Every clock cycle, it should stay what it's doing. Now, this instruction needs to be quite explicit. It needs to be told to stay in state 1. If the button is pressed, it will move to state 2, in which case the only change will be that door 1 will be opened. The way that I've designed my um, controller, which makes the most sense to me, is that the door should be open and then immediately closed again. And at this point in state 3, the sensor can be read. So, in other words, at this point, we're, not, we're ignoring the input from the button. If there is no person, in other words, S prime, it will go back to the wait state because obviously the person has pressed a button and lost interest, and you don't want the door to stand and hang open until someone decides to walk in. You want it to close so that you can maintain a reasonable amount of security. If the, the sensor senses that there is someone in the booth, then it will move to two to state four, in which case uh, both doors will be closed and the UV light will be on. Once the decontamination is finished, irrespective of the inputs, uh, it will move through to state 5, in which case it will open door number 2. As long as the person is still in the booth, S, uh, the state will stay in state 5 and wait until the person has left. When S prime uh, registers, however, it means that the person has left and that the cycle is com complete and we've gone back to state 1. This is a very simple um, diagram. You can see there's five states. What I haven't indicated is anything of how the states are stored. So that is very much up to you. Or if you're using 
a VHDL synthesis or something like that. You can even just let the computer determine how the states will be stored in the, the memory. For the purposes, it doesn't even really matter. Uh, an additional um, thing to make your, your diagram a little bit more clear would be to list S1, S2, up to S5, and just to give a brief description of these of the states um, for clarity. Uh, I didn't have space to do that here. Uh, that concludes the example. I hope that this has made things a little bit more clear for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will get back to them as soon as I see them. Thanks. Bye.